Okay, let's talk about sewage treatment. I mean, look at that, that's so gross looking. You can almost smell it. Hey, listen, I know you probably feel like, well, I don't really want to talk about sewage. That's just gross. But here's the thing about it. Uh, and, and one of the reasons that I enjoy teaching this class is because this is a science class where we, we also get to talk about you know other things like social justice. And sewage treatment is this huge social justice issue in this world. Uh, and it's going to be a little bit sad, to be honest, but it also should inspire us to try to improve the lives of those among us who are uh, the least advantaged. So let's just take a look at this. So, what, so all sewage is basically is municipal wastewater that's contaminated with basically feces and urine. Okay, so when you flush the toilet, you probably just don't give any thought to where it goes. But again, it is uh, has to obey the laws of conservation of matter. So you can't create or destroy matter. So even though we don't want to think about our feces and urine when we're done with them, they have to go somewhere. Okay, and municipalities have to think about what to do with it. Otherwise, we're going to have you know all kinds of environmental problems if we don't deal with it correctly. Now the thing is. Uh, People for the longest time didn't didn't bother to treat it, right? So if, if we don't treat it, what's going to happen? Okay, we're, we're going to end up with two real big problems of 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 untreated of releasing untreated sewage into our waterways. Okay, the first thing is we're going to transmit pathogens. There's many pathogens that are quite deadly to humans that instead of being transmitted by by coughing and sneezing, they're transmitted through fe fecal matter. Okay, so so things that in, infest our digestive systems they tend to, to, to do okay in the water, even for long times. So, you know, unlike viruses, when you sneeze, they're only viable for maybe minutes or, or hours, whereas these days, weeks, okay, months. Now, the other thing is uh, there's, there's a lot of nutrient potential in feces, and so uh, it leads to the eutrophication of waterways. So, so there's a lot of pathogens, and, and when I say pathogens, the whole gambit, we're talking about bacterium, viruses, parasites, uh, they, they, they are transmitted from person to person through fecal material. And, and, and if these feces end up in the water supply, even if the water doesn't look like it has feces in it, it can still have, it doesn't take a lot of these pathogens in your body to cause you know, potentially lethal infection. Uh, so so if, if, if water gets into the, if, if feces get into the water supply, we end up spreading these diseases. And so, uh, so what we find is that that if 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 somebody upstream from you has a leaking uh, pit toilet, let's say, or, you know, or or, or uses, uh, you know, in many parts of the world, it's sad that people don't have they don't have plumbing, they don't have houses, they they don't have any place to go to the bathroom. It's a real issue in this world, believe it or not. And so people just go like on the riverside. Okay, and then it rains and those feces end up washing into the river. Well, downstream, you look at the water and you don't see feces floating by, right? And you're thirsty, so you drink this water and you end up getting sick. Or you're getting enough well. You think a well would be fine, but what happens is people end up with uh, damaged um, septic tanks and then that leaks into the water. And then when people pump the water out of it, they think they're getting well water, but actually what they're getting is contaminated, again, with these with this fecal material, which has within it these pathogens. So <clears throat> what we find is that in developing countries, in the poorer countries of the world, there just isn't an infrastructure in place to treat sewage. You're going to see by the end of this presentation, it's quite elaborate. I mean, it's quite a feat of engineering to take in sewage and put out drinkable water. But that's what that's what every municipality in the developed world is charged with doing. But unfortunately, these developing countries, like in sub-Saharan Africa, you know, some of the poor parts of Southeast Asia, India, uh, what happens is, you know, Central and South America, you basically have, have they're, they're, they're just dumping raw sewage into the stream. And then downstream from them, people are taking this water out. They're, they're bathing in it. They're swimming in it. They're cooking with it. And as a result, these, these diarrheal diseases and the two big, big, killers are cholera and dysentery, they tend to spread like crazy in these uh, developing countries, as do, you know, parasitic infections and viral infections. But let's just, let's just uh, dial in on cholera and dysentery here. So cholera has long been known as a, as a, a killer of people. And basically, it, 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 you basically die of diarrhea, okay? Uh, so you would be shocked to learn just how, what percentage of the world population, uh, and I'll share it with you in just a minute, a lot of people in this world die every year of dehydration caused by diarrhea 
and one of the big killers is cholera, okay? So cholera is caused by a bacterium uh, and uh, it basically causes people to have this very watery, runny diarrhea that's very acute, you know, and in the course of, of like a week, you basically die of, of, uh, of dehydration because your body, just, it just comes right out of your body. Now we find this a lot of times, uh, cholera outbreaks often follow natural disasters. So natural disasters like like a tsunami, an earthquake, uh, you know, a, a, a powerful storm. Like I remember, like in Haiti, there was this, this big earthquake, right? And then and then the the World Health Organization is like, there's going to be cholera, and sure enough, there was. And the reason was is that it disrupted people's ability to get access to clean drinking water from say wells. And as a result, people had to resort to getting it from streams, and that that just really quickly ends up spreading cholera. Now, it turns out cholera, even though it's a bacterium, there is a, va a vaccine for it, an oral vaccine. You can actually, if you or I were going to go to a country where our doctor is concerned there would be cholera, they'd say, you're going to take this before you go. And it gives you like three months, half a year's protection. But here's that social justice thing. You and I get to have it. The people who are dying of it every year, they don't get to have it. They're not, they're, they don't have enough money to purchase it. They could be provided with it if, if, if the richer governments of the world took it upon themselves to make this a, a, a priority, but we just don't, right? It wouldn't cost you or me that much at all to save these people. We just don't do it. Dysentery is another terrible one. Dysentery is caused by two things. It can be caused by a bacteria or an amoeba, the two main ones that cause dysentery. So dysentery uh, is basically, it's a condition rather than an individual infection of an individual disease, right? What makes dysentery, dysentery is your, um, and I know this is really gross and I apologize for that, but basically your your diarrhea is bloody. So it's causing lesions in your uh, intestines. And this is a real killer. I mean, it kills a lot of people. It's probably like four times as deadly as cholera and dysentery kills a significant number of people every year. And unfortunately, many of those people are children. So it turns out these diarrheal diseases infect almost 2 billion children every year in this world. Almost 2 billion people. And, and of those, about half a million of them die because they dehydrate from, from uh, uh, the, these, these uh, diarrheal diseases. In fact, most children in developing countries will have three different infections of di three different diarrheal infections in the course of every year of their lives and it's simply because they don't have access to clean drinking water or a way of treating their sewage so those, those, those you put those two things together and you've just got this disaster in your hands right I mean, I mean if you have access to clean water from a well well then you 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 can avoid this even if you don't have sewage treatment if you had sewage treatment that stream water would be far less likely i mean you still have animal feces so that used to be far less likely to spread disease but in most of these countries, you have neither. Now, prior to the late 1800s, like 1890s, there was no such thing as sewage treatment. Okay, so people just tried to basically, they just, they would, they would they, you know, they would channel it in sewers and, and, and make it go into a river, or make it go into the ocean, and it would make it smell a little bit better in town, okay? Uh, uh, you know, actually, you know, before then, what people would do, they'd, just, they'd have a, a a chamber pot and they would just dump it into the street. I mean, it's just, I, mean I can't imagine what it must have been like back then. It's so gross. Uh, but of course, you know, that, that, the spread disease is quite a bit. So people, you know, it used to be very common for people to die of dysentery uh, and, and cholera. And, and that's just because they, they, they just didn't put two and two together. But what happened started in the, 19, in the 1890s, rather, people said, look, we can treat sewage with uh, oxygenation and with some sort of chemicals. And they, they, the main reason they wanted to do it was to make it less stinky, but they realized, oh, this is also making it less damaging to, to people and to the environment. So let's just talk about modern uh, sewage treatment facilities, okay? So, so where does our, where do our feces go when we flush? Okay, well, here's, here's what happens, okay? It, it, it goes to the sewers, it gets to a sewage treatment place, and then there's a three-step uh, treatment that happens. Okay, you have what's called primary, basically where we're settling out solids and, and filtering out big things. There we have secondary, where it's really where the magic happens, where we we basically encourage aerobic bacteria to to eat the feces and decompose it until it's not feces anymore. All right, and then we have tertiary, where we basically we're going to take out whatever is left behind. Then we might have to do some last little treatment before we let it go into the streams. But that's basically. It's like a three-stage process of taking 
gross sewer water and it, it comes in one end and out the other end comes perfectly safe drinking water. Pretty wild. Okay, so let's talk about primary treatment. Primary treatment, we have what we call the influent as opposed to the effluent. Effluent going out, influent coming in. Easy to remember, in, influent. So the first thing we want to do is we want to have some sort of screens to filter out big things. You know, we're talking like plastic bags, sticks, you know, dead rats, <laughs> rags, whatever. We, things like that, we just don't want to come in here and clog up the process. So we have, we have some sort of large scale filtering system to start with. But then it's going to come into what we call a grid chamber, which isn't really shown here. This grid chamber is actually a very long chamber, like a, like a, a, a channel uh, where the water moves fairly slow. And the reason is uh, we, we, the, the purpose of the grit chamber is to let the grit fall out. So we're talking like things like sand and gravel, coffee grounds, eggshells, anything, you know, any, any big chunks we want it to fall out before we go any further than that. But, but what tends not to fall out at this point is, is fecal matter. Okay. That's going to happen in a sedimentation tank. So, so after it passes out of the grit chamber, it's going to go into here. And, and again, we're going to let it sit. We want to, we want to move very slow. And so the fecal material, which you know, a lot of times we call them biosolids. I guess it just sounds better that way. They used to call it sludge. They, now they like to call it biosolids. But basically, the biosolids, the, the, the fecal material, is going to settle. A lot of it's going to settle to the bottom of this. We'll just then pump it out and deal with it. Like, and, and when we deal with it, we could like, you know, it's got a lot of, of uh, nutrient value. So you could potentially, if you did the right things with it to try to get rid of pathogens, you could use it as fertilizer, which some municipalities do. Again, you've got to be careful about spreading disease. It could just be shipped to a landfill or it could be burned, kind of gross, but that's those are your options. you got to do something with it, right? And then out, out of the sedimentation tank, the effluent is carried into the secondary treatment. So in the secondary treatment, basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to get bacteria. And these, these are bacteria that are, that are in you right now. Like we all have all this bacteria in us at all times. Some of it is pathogenic, but most of it's not, okay? And so these bacteria... They just float in with the feces. And so we're just trying to get them to like, hey, we just want you to go ahead and, and, and eat this, these feces. And so that means we need to give them lots of oxygen. So we have this, this bubbling system, or sometimes we spray it or trickle it. But we, the idea is we're trying to get oxygen to it as rapidly as we can. And it's going to stay in this aeration tank. And these age, sometimes these are big round things that start to stir up. or you know, they, they look at it a lot of different ways. But the bottom line is we're trying to mix like 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 the feces with oxygen and bacteria so the bacteria has has we're not trying to give it we, we don't want oxygen availability to limit its ability to do this so so it's going to stay in here for a number of hours you know like 8 10 12 hours uh maybe even longer but basically <clears throat> that that's the main thing we're doing to try to get rid of 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 sewage is we're trying to get bacteria to eat it by giving it oxygen now, as it comes out of here, there's there, there's a lot of that material is going to settle down here out of the secondary clarifier, it's called. And so the stuff that settles down has basically fecal material that hasn't been digested, bacteria, lots of bacteria, and 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 leftover material from when the bacteria like ate the feces, whatever they left behind, that's no longer really feces. So this sludgy stuff, we call it activated sludge. It's got, the reason it's called activated, it has a lot of bacteria in it. And because of that, we can use it to inoculate the incoming stuff and sort of jumpstart it. So some of this sludge we'll, we'll take and we'll just get rid of like we did with the, when it first came in. But some of it we're gonna pump back up into here and use it to, to, to inoculate the incoming fecal material, the incoming bio biosolids to, to, to with all this bacteria that, that are in here. So, so this is basically this, this supply of bacteria that's going to eat this up. So we have this, this cyclic process that's constantly happening here, but, 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 but out of it, we, at, at, at each cycle, there's always some uh, lighter fraction that doesn't have this fecal material in it anymore, or very little, that's then going to move out into our tertiary. Uh, and so I just explained that part to you. So let's talk about the tertiary treatment. Okay, so now what have I got? Okay, now most of the solids are gone, but there's still bacteria. There's still maybe a little bit of fecal matter. Okay, so I, I've got to make sure it's, it's, it's safe to send on. Okay, uh, so basically we're going to have to kill the bacteria that are in it. So we're going to use some sort of a defect, disinfect. It could be chlorine, ozone, or UV light. But not so fast. That's ultimately what we're going to do in tertiary treatment is, is we got rid of the solids. Now we have a little bit of bacteria that were helping us kill us. And there might be some pathogens that, that were along for the ride. I want to get rid of those before I discharge it. 
but there's other things in here I got to consider. Okay, so let's just walk our, ourselves through it. Now, it's not just that we're trying to keep from dumping uh, pathogens into our waterways. We also don't want to cause eutrophication. Remember, there's two problems with sewage. One of them was 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 uh, uh, pathogens, but the other one was eutrophication. So we don't want either. Well, there's a lot of of nutrients that are in feces. If you if you've ever seen like like a yard where a dog goes about them, I mean the grass just grows like crazy there, right? So we've got phosphorus and we've got nitrates, and so we've got to do something with those. So what they tend to do is they use some substance called alum, and it's going to react with the phosphorus and turn into a solid that's going to precipitate out. So now we've gotten the phosphorus out. Good for us. The next thing is we got to get rid of the, the nitrogen. Well, now we've got ammonia, which is dissolved in that year and sometimes has that ammonia smell to it. We have ammonium, which is an ionic form of this, and we have nitrate. Now, the thing is, ammonium and nitrate are both very water soluble. And, they, and, and, and so the compounds you make with them, they, they, they just dissolve in water so that you can't get rid of it the way you can get rid of phosphorus. Okay, Phosphate is easy to get out. These are not. So what we're going to do, eh, we're going to use the nitrogen cycle. So we're going to use nitrifying bacteria, which are going to turn this and this into this. Remember the nitrogen cycle? You better. Okay. So we use nitrogen, nitrifying ones to turn ammonia and ammonium into nitrate. Then we're going to use denitrifying bacteria, right? Which eats this and turns that back into atmospheric N2. So basically we have these like bioreactors where we're just like setting up the nitrogen cycle to happen on steroids. Uh, and now we've gotten rid of these things, okay? And keep in mind, in order to get rid of the, the, the ammonium and the ammonia and the nitrate, I had to have bacteria. So I, I can't, at this point, I can't be poisoning the water with chlorine, but now I can't. So then what I do is I pass, after that, I pass it through a filter to get rid of whatever solids would have precipitated out. Now I'm ready to go ahead and treat it with chlorine gas or ozone or ultraviolet light, something that's gonna kill pathogens and the bacteria that I was using to, to help uh, do uh, run the nitrogen cycle. So I'm now I'm going to try to get rid of all these things by poisoning them. And the chlorine is the main one that people use, okay? Uh, a lot of them actually generate their own chlorine on, on site so they don't end up having to transport it because it's so dangerous. It's a very, very uh, uh, caustic chemical if you breathe it in, okay? Now, now, so then what you got to do is you, you don't want to dump chlorine in the water right? because if you do that, you're going to end up killing good, good uh, microbes in our streams and, and messing up the ecosystem. So now we got to get rid of the chlorine, okay? And so uh, there's a substance that's like sodium bisulfate, I think it is, I don't know. But basically you put that in there and the chlorine reacts to that and then you filter that out. And then finally, voila, out the other end comes clean drinking water, okay? So what came in? was disgusting sewage and what came out is water that's potable is drinkable and so here's just a look at the whole process okay we screens uh this kind of just stirs it up helps we're going to settle out the grit is going to come out so that's just like the the sand and the eggshells and the coffee grounds then then the heavier fraction of, of the sludge is going to settle down here and get pumped away and then we're going to pump the other stuff into here where we're going to put it through a bubbler and then the, the aerobic bacteria are going to chew on it and, and start to digest it. Things will flow out of here. The heavier chunks will settle down here, but they've got a lot of bacteria in them. So some of them will let go, but some of them we're going to pump back through to try to keep inoculating this with as many bacteria as we can. And then the clear portion, the lighter portion, this flows out and goes into tertiary treatment where we do the things we just described. Okay, that sewage treatment. Amazing, isn't it? Someone had to think all this stuff up and there's people whose job it is to make this run. And although you might think that's a terrible job, you better be grateful that there are people who do that. Some very talented engineers. And, and you know what? They are constantly having to adapt to, to new situations. Okay, thanks for watching. This is me not complaining about this project.